Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. Girl, we gotta get into it because we have so much to go over. Let me switch to my phone cam, show you guys like the amount of products that we have to review. And this isn't even everything that I wanted to talk about today. It's otherworldly. Honestly, I think it's time to be ruthless because we are getting so many similar products this year of brands just come out with the same things and we've got to talk about it. We got to talk about what's what, what's worth your buck. And there are some products in today's reviews that have officially become my holy grails. Literally my holy grails. I think my makeup looks so good today and it is because of a few of these products so we're gonna do speed reviews on these but also I'm gonna have b-roll footage of me applying each and every one not every single one because we have multiples in each category but I will have some footage of some kind of me applying every single one of these so that you can see what they look like on the face and you can decide what new launches are worth your coin because girl you're going to work you're getting money and you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your car payment. I'm not gonna have you out here buying 400 lip treatments, okay? We only want you to pick the best of the best. So let's get into it. As I mentioned, my name is Rudy. We talk about makeup, hair, skincare, body care. We kind of do old YouTube style videos with new products. So if that sounds like you, I would love to have you subscribe. I'd like to start this video by thanking Beekman1802 for being a partial sponsor on this video. I am so excited to be working with them this year. You're going to see multiple sponsorships and integrations from me and Beekman over the next couple months where I'm talking about some of my absolute favorite products from their brand. And this month we are highlighting the O Mega Milk Facial Oil. There are so many unique favorites that I have from Beekman. You guys have seen me use a lot of them. The milk shake. I love their skin tint. I love the bloom cream, but the Omega milk is a quiet favorite of mine that I'm really excited to highlight this month. This is a facial oil unlike any other facial oil. I think you hear a lot of people talk about how they're locking in their skincare by adding in like an occlusive layer, perhaps slugging. And I've tried that before. I've tried it with things like petrolatum and I've also tried it with facial oils and nothing has really made my skin feel bouncy and glowy the way this has. This is a super unique facial oil. It's unlike any other in the sense that it has this really lightweight milky consistency to it that actually absorbs better into the skin than your typical facial oil and has 90 times more omega fatty acids than a typical facial oil which are so good for your skin barrier it can absorb up to 20 percent deeper than most facial oils and it just gives you the most insane bouncy glow to your skin i personally like to use this at the very end of my skincare routine at night to help lock everything in keep your hydration in and have really bouncy skin in the morning but you can also use this before your makeup as skincare prep, especially if you are feeling really dry and you need that glow to show through. I am not wearing a highlighter today and I prepped with this product so you can really see the results on my face today. It's non-greasy. It also includes some vitamin C and niacinamide for brightening the skin and it's just going to give you beautiful, bouncy, plump skin. I absolutely love this facial oiler. I highly recommend if you haven't tried this out. It is one of my favorite Beekman products yet and thank you again to Beekman for sponsoring this portion of the video. So we talked a little bit about how I prepped my skin and we've got three brand new complexion products to speed review today. These are all highly coveted in the makeup community right now. A lot of people have been talking about them and I have a lot to say, so let's get into it. Starting with the Kosas BB Burst. I have had this in my possession for quite some time. As you can see, the top of this says top secret until 125. They sent this out to a bunch of creators early to get their take on it, although we weren't allowed to post on about it until it was released to the public. This is one of the better products that Kosas has released within the last year year. This is a BB tinted gel cream. It says that it's light buildable coverage, hydrating burst of serious skincare, has a smoothing blurring effect with vibrant fresh look. This reminds me of an old school BB cream in the way that it has this like gel like texture to it that kind of feels like those suspended um, pigment products but already mixed together. Do you know what I'm talking about? So for example like there's this one from CoverGirl. This product if you mixed all of it together so that the product wasn't suspended it would be this and this is actually the exact same component which is funny. I think when I first tried it I was like yes I really really like this but now looking back I think the reason that 
that I was so excited, and I do like this to be clear, was that I was happy to see Kosas going in a different direction than just like the typical oily or over the top glowy or over the top glittery direction that they were going in. I do think this is a step in the right direction for them. It provides a nice light to medium coverage. I do find it to be slightly drying and because it's so watery, it doesn't mix well with every other makeup product in your routine. I know a lot of people have mentioned that it pills and separates on them. That hasn't happened to me, but I will say it's not something that I'm grabbing or gravitating to towards over my hourglass or my summer Friday skin tint, especially because this doesn't have any SPF in it. I'm still choosing to go with my summer Fridays or um, my hourglass. So that's that on the BB burst. I do think it's pretty and I'm happy to see Kosas heading in a good direction, but it's still not up to snuff with my absolute favorite skin tints. I have had the complete opposite experience with these two foundations. I am just flabbergasted at how good these foundations are. I'm shaken to my core. So first let's talk about the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. This is the first one I got out of the two. And I actually have the original of this product. This is what it looks like. This is the HD Skin and this is the Glow version. And I very much prefer the Glow version. The HD Skin is beautiful and it's very skin-like. It's a little bit more of a satin to matte finish. I cannot express to you how beautiful this foundation is. It gives you this lightish to medium coverage that has a beautiful glow. It looks as if your skin has a filter on it. It gives you that pearlized finish that just looks healthy without any glitter or shimmer. I love it so much. The only thing I don't like about it is that it has a slight scent to it, but it doesn't bother me so much. It hasn't irritated my skin and it's not something I notice throughout the day. This is like a new, I can't even like, uh, the only other comparison is this one, which we'll talk about in a second. This is like a new top top for me at the point where I'm gonna be comparing every foundation against these two. And if it's not up to snuff, then it's not worth getting. I'm not even kidding. Like I'm looking at all the foundations in my drawer. My, my favorite from last year was this Rose Ink Soft Light. And compared to these two, it's not, even close. It's not even close, you guys. I'm so happy to see foundations like this coming out to where the reviews are so incredibly positive that we're heading in a direction where foundation is coming back into my routine. I have been wearing these foundations over skin tints for the past two weeks, which is so unlike me. So going into the about face, this is the about face, the performer, and why I am considering this to be one notch above the HD skin is for multiple reasons. One, this is $22. Incredible. For what you're getting in this foundation, $22, it, it, it's absolutely amazing and I highly recommend you try this one before this one because they give me similar vibes. So one, it's $22. Two, I love a doe foot applicator on a foundation because you're getting exactly the right amount of product that you want. You can place it where you want and you're not ever gonna look too heavy on the skin. Three, everything I said about this foundation in terms of the way that it feels, the texture, the glow, the naturalness on the skin, which is what I'm wearing today, comes in this one and it has an insane shade range. I believe there's 45 shades with four different undertones. I wear a shade light, medium, neutral one or two. Light, medium, two, neutral is my shade and it's a beautiful shade match. It looks so good on my skin and it really just brightens everything up. I am absolutely blown away by this foundation. I highly, highly recommend if you are going to grab one thing from this video besides my mascara, let it be this. I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life. Both of these are incredible. If you like Makeup Forever, also recommend trying this out. I don't think you need both though because they are very similar. Okay, getting into a really exciting launch from Cali Ray. These are the Cali Ray Hideaway Under Eye Brightening Concealers slash Under Eye Brighteners. I'm obsessed with these. So last September, I went to Los Angeles and visited my best friend Kevin. And while I was there, we actually went to Newport Beach to visit the Cali Ray office. And Wendy, who is the founder of Cali Ray, she's also the founder of Urban Decay Cosmetics. And she is just an absolute genius when it comes to beauty. It was so fun going to her office and seeing all the makeup that she had out, all the things that she was playing with, like watching her basically create the future of this brand. It was so iconic. And one of the things that we got to test were the hideaway concealers. This was again in September. So I have known about these for a while and I've known just how iconic they would be. So I have three shades here, but the two shades that I use the most are Dawn and Pale Sun. This is what I have on under my eyes today. The before and after difference of the brightening that these give you is unbelievable and I would say incomparable to any other eye brightener I've ever used. I like the idea of using an eye brightener. I have a bunch here. You know, I have this one 
from NYX. I have the Pixie one, which I used to be obsessed with. I've tried a lot of eye brighteners. There is nothing like these on the market. They're self-setting. They don't require powder, but they also dry down to a skin-like finish. I've worn these without concealer. I've worn these with concealer on top. I have just a little bit of concealer on top of these today. And I am so impressed with the shade range. Comes in eight shades for all different skin types to decide what it is that you want to brighten on your face and wear. I would love to see these come out in like green and more like neutral shades as well for regular concealers. But I really think that you guys are going to like these, especially if you're dealing with darker under eyes, specifically in the shade Dawn. It's such a beautiful light pink and it just makes my under eyes pop. I'm obsessed. Which speaking of under eyes, I have been setting my makeup recently with this new powder from M Cosmetics. This is the M Cosmetics Portrait Mode Refining Setting Powder in the shade Sheer. I am highly impressed with this powder, perhaps too impressed. And by that I mean, I have never tried a little pressed powder that looks like it's not gonna do very much and does so much, maybe ever. Like it's almost too intense, you guys. It comes with this little puff, which is really all you need. I like to round it. Take literally the tiniest amount and it's gonna mattify your skin instantly. In fact, right now, this powder is almost too intense for me in the winter months because my skin is very dry and I keep spraying myself with this mist from Future Wise just to get a little bit more hydration back into my face. This does the trick. If you are oily, or you want a perfect mattified base, this is your girl. Bring her on the go, like she will give you a matte look. Again, you don't need a lot for this to go a long way. It is very matte and it'll set you, girl. It'll set you. It ain't leaving a tinge of glow. You know, like with the Say powder or the Kosas powder, you're getting a little bit of glow through that. You know, it's not just gonna give you that flat matte, no. This is giving flat matte, and if that's what you want, I highly recommend you try that. Next up in our speed reviews is our bronzer category. These are brand new from Glossier. These are their new cloud paints, and it came in even more shades than this, but these were the shades that I felt made sense for my skin tone. And these are an extension of their current cloud paints by adding in bronzer shades and just deeper shades in general that are more neutral for the skin. This is something that people had been asking for for years and years and years, and I think probably forgot about, and now now they're like, oh, by the way, we made these and they're very nice. I will say in general, I am not a liquid person when it comes to um, blushes, bronzers, etc. I love a liquid highlighter, obviously liquid for concealer and for foundations. But when it comes to blushes and bronzers, I really prefer a packed cream, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Something about the liquidity of a product makes it a little bit harder to control where it's going to go. Although it could look more natural on the skin, I find it's a lot easier easier just to go in with a cream that is already potted. Because with a liquid product, you have to put it on the back of your hand, decide, are you using a brush? Are you using a sponge? How is that going to go on your face and how is it going to blend in with what's already been put there? Because it's going to melt in with the other products, whereas a cream, you have a little bit of time to determine where you want to put that, the blendability, etc. With that being said, these are beautiful. I used the shade Swept today as my like contour slash bronzer. I've noticed for my personal skin tone, because I run a little bit yellow in the skin that I prefer to actually go for cool tones on my skin. I love a cool tone blush. I love a cool tone bronzer moment. So I wanted something that was a little bit cool tone because it ends up showing up warm on my skin. So I went for one of the lighter shades as a contour. They also have two very warm shades, one of them being Dune, which looks almost orange on my skin tone. They also have a couple shades darker and then one shade lighter in sale. Do I think these are good? Yes. If you are a liquid person and you like the cloud paint formula and you know you like it, the shades are beautiful and I think you will find one that makes sense for you. If you're not a liquid person and you're just curious about it, I would say skip it. Like there are so many cream and like gel style bronzers on the market that are easier to work with and just can, you can just plop on the skin. Not to say that I don't like these, but I do think it depends on the type of person you are and the type of makeup that you prefer and what you like to put on your face. Will I use them again? Absolutely. Will I use them as often as say my makeup by Mario soft skin enhancer? No, I use that thing almost every single day. So that's really up to you. But I will say if you are wondering about the shades, they are very pretty. Which speaking of the blush versus bronzer debate, speaking of the cream versus the liquid debate and what really works for me, I was not going to review these because I I like the, the brand Basma. This is the Basma Cream Blushes. They have a foundation stick that's gone pretty viral, but they tend to 
lean towards like heavier makeup a little bit more of like a full glam look and as you guys know that's not my jam so i just assumed that their cream blushes were going to be similar to that i'm obsessed spoiler alert i'm completely obsessed but I'm only obsessed with this one shade. So these are their new cream blushes and this is in the shade Mauve. I have not been impressed with a cream blush formula in quite some time and these remind me a little bit of the Tower 28 blushes but a little bit less pigmented and a little bit easier to work with. I think the packaging is really cool how you just slide it up but this was the only neutral shade that I could find that I really wanted to wear. There's hot pinks, hot oranges, hot reds, and then there was this one mauve. So I would love to see this line extend into more nudes, neutrals, maybe a terracotta, a brick shade. I would love to see this in a bronzer. Oh my God, this would be amazing as a bronzer. It's got a beautiful, lightweight, silky feel to it. It blends into the skin beautifully. It doesn't look too pigmented. It's not too glowy, it's not too matte. I would say it's more on the satin side than it is the glowy side, but also because it's a cream, it's gonna give you a little bit of that glow. It's absolutely beautiful. If you've been on the fence about it, I say try it out. They're really, really skin-like, very beautiful. I'm happy that I tried it out because it truly is something that I'm continually going back to. Oh no, no! Look what I just did. I need to close that and put it away. Okay, buy it, it's good. Don't wanna waste it. <laughs> While we are on the topic of blushes, I did want to talk about the good old, very viral milk cooling jelly water tints. I can make an entire video on this. I have so much to say. I'm going to try and make this really quick. I think they are incredibly innovative and I really, really like them. However, I'm not using them very often. That kind of wraps it all up. So these came out recently in four shades and the formula is so unique. It is this jelly watery blob. Reminds me very much of Korean, early Korean makeup with the popsicle lips and just the the general stain obsession in uh, Korean makeup, which I am also so obsessed with. And I think that the format was really what got people to be so interested in these. People were also eating them. That's disgusting. It's makeup. You know that. I know that. Don't, don't eat this. Don't, en don't encourage children to eat thing eat things on the internet. Anyways, pros of this product, absolutely so innovative and different. It's like a true jelly on the skin. It's sheer. It looks very uh, pungent and if you like bright bold shades this is the product for you if you like a long wearing stain this is the product for you cons it is incredibly drying because they are a water-based product you are not getting the hydrated glowy dewy look that you're getting from a cream product you are getting a true stain which is not everyone's cup of tea I personally prefer to use these on the lips than I do on the cheeks because I do find that they dry out my skin a little bit using them for pops lips on the lips the inner lip is my favorite way to use them and then use a liner and a gloss and it will last you all day long I have washed this hand a couple times and I still have the stain there so the longevity is 1000% there I wish that they could make water tints in more neutral shades I would be super impressed if they could it doesn't seem like that's something that the industry has gotten to yet do I think you need them no if you want to try one in particular. My favorite shade is in Burst. This is sort of the closest shade to the um, Benetint, which is my favorite, but none of them are really as beautiful to me as the Benetint, which I love using on my lips as well. And they're interesting, they're so cooling, they feel really unique on the skin, and if you are a makeup collector and you want to have try something new, absolutely pick one up. Do you need all four? Totally not. But yeah, I don't know. Milk is really doing something fun and interesting with this and pushing the level of, of ingenuity and kind of just like originality in the makeup space, which I really appreciate. And they are fun and they made me excited to use them. Am I picking them up every single day? No, but am I having fun when I do use them? Yes. So take that what you will. Okay, let's talk about the eyes a little bit and then we will round out with the lips. So uh, we have a new launch, an eyeshadow launch that I have not been excited for an eyeshadow launch in a really long time. I don't know about you guys, everything started to look the same to me and I really just gravitated towards like one and done shadows. My favorite recently being the Merit Solo Shadows absolutely love them. I'm also a really big fan of the About Face um, liquid eye paints, but in terms of a powder shadow, it's been years since I was excited by something. 
until now. These are brand new from Make Beauty and these are the multi-chromatic metal reflecting eyeshadows. They're stunning, they're stunning, they're stunning. These shades are the three that I kept from the PR that I received. The dark shade is in Onyx, the light shade is in Glaze, which is the one I'm wearing today, and then the medium shade is in Quartz, which I wanted to keep a nice cool tone gray shade. I'll do a little swatch for you. The pigment on these, is out of this world, out of this world. And they are absolutely stunning. Would I say that they are multi-chromatic? No, they're not. They are straight metallic shadows. There's no multi-chrome to them, they're just metallic. There's no glitter to them either, they're just like this really beautiful sheen. And the pigment is there, you guys. Like this is how much is left on my skin even after just applying those swatches. The pigment is there. I can't figure out what to make of Make Beauty because I really, really love their products. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I have an entire video on all of their products. My favorite product that they make by far is their concealer, but they are under the the center brands which is Naturium, Fleur, Make Beauty, Saltaire and um, prequel. And I just feel like they don't get even close to the amount of love that the other center brands get or that makeup brands get. And they should, like the, the really big YouTubers and the really big TikTokers, they're not reviewing Make Beauty and they should because these are so beautiful. They are so thoughtful with their packaging. Everything is so luxurious and everything has a purpose. They're beautiful, they're stunning, and I think if you're a person who loves to do an eye look and you have specific color that you love to go to for your metallic finish or your, the center of your lid, grab one of these. My favorite shade is in Glaze. This is the one I have on my inner corner, and it's just stunning. I love to pop this on the lid with my fingers. I would prefer to use them with my fingers. However, I have long nails right now, so I can't get into my inner corner with my fingers, but this shade is so, so, stunning. It's like a beautiful goldish champagne. Absolutely beautiful and I'm looking forward to playing with these even more. Highly recommend you try out the shade Glaze if you're an everyday makeup girly because it just makes your eyes pop. They're beautiful, they're unique, and I hope that make gets more attention this year because they honestly, they deserve it. Another product that deserves your attention is mine. I wanted to just add this into our speed review video because our drop is still open. If you're new here, this is my Bubble and Rudy chocolate dripped tubing mascara. I am wearing it today. This is a one-of-a-kind, super chocolatey, rich, brown tubing mascara, unlike any others on the market. It is a natural bristle cone shape wand for every single eye shape. It gives you a fluttery everyday lash with a little bit of drama, but it's still super wearable because of the brown. Obviously this is my product, so I'm about to sing its praises to the heaven, but I wanted to mention it because we still have another week left in our drop and you need it. You absolutely need it. If you are a tubing mascara person and you haven't picked this up, you are missing out. It is one of the best I've ever tried because I made it. All right, let's round this video out with some lip launches. I have three here in front of me. I, I really am feeling overwhelmed with lip products, so I can only imagine what the general public must be feeling in terms of lip products. The amount of lip treatments on the market is staggering, staggering, and it is just going up every single day. Another brand is coming out with lip treatment, and it can be hard to know which ones are right for you. And I want to do a full lip treatment video. However, at a certain point, it gets to be like, oh my God, they're all the same. They're not, but like, it gets very overwhelming. So we're gonna talk about just the new ones here today. And then in another video, we will compare Persona, Saltaire, Nude Sticks, Rode, Naturium, Ola Henriksen, Tower 28, Rode, did I already say Rode? Summer Fridays, trust me girls, I know, it's a lot. So let's start with one that I feel confident in talking about, which are the new Lip Softies from Tower 28. I don't love these. I like them, but I don't love them. Um, these are brand new and I was really excited when I got these in the mail because I love Tower 28's lip products. Um, not all of them, actually. I love the lip jellies. These are the most iconic product that Tower 28 has ever made, in my opinion. And besides the SOS spray. So when I heard that they were coming out with a lip treatment, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. They just didn't live up to what 
what's the standard that I have set for what I like in a lip treatment. So these are a little thinner, a little slipperier, and not as long wearing as I like in a lip treatment. So for me, the top dogs in the lip treatment category, which we'll get to, are Rode, which I know a lot of people have opinions on, but they stick to my lips like none other and last, and the Ola Henriksen, which we'll get to in a minute. To me, the top dogs, and also Summer Fridays, that's a great one, but for me, it's Ola Henriksen and Rode. They are thick, juicy, extra shiny, can be worn before bed as a lip treatment or during the day on top of lipsticks. They go well with lip liners. They hug the lips, they last, and they actually make my lips feel better than they did before. Unfortunately, with the lip softies, I found that the wear time was very low. As beautiful as the colors are, it just wasn't enough for me to be interested in wearing them. I have not um, really pulled these out. The only one that I have worn more than once is the Ube Vanilla, which is this sort of brownish plum shade, but it is very similar to the Summer Fridays Brown Sugar shade, so it's not that the shade itself is that um, unique. I will say a lot of the people are saying like, you know, these brands keep coming out with the same colors of the products. It would be different if there were multiple different colors. And I will say that the Tower 28 colors are very similar to other launches as well. There's one that's not in here. It's the Watermelon Kiwi. I'm allergic to kiwis, so I gave it to my friend Erica. And then my last gripe about these, which it maybe isn't a gripe for you, is the applicator. Um, I was really cutely excited to see the round tipped applicator that reminds me of Carmex. But because they are pretty pigmented, it's not gonna give you the best opportunity to apply it uh, within your lip lines. So as much as I love Tower 28, again, I've mentioned in the past, it, you're not going to love every single launch from every single brand that you love. And I do think that the lip jellies are a far above better option than the lip softies. They're non-sticky and they give you a beautiful sheen and glow to the lips. And if you can find a shade in the lip jellies, I would recommend those over the lip softies. Now bringing it back to Ula Henriksen, they had a lip product come out and this reminds me so much of last year when I was at Coachella. Um, they released their original Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment and the reason that I literally went to the Sephora in Palm Springs to buy it was because it was creamsicle scented and that is my obsession in the summer. I love creamsicles. I just saw that Wendy's is coming out with a creamsicle frosty. I am lactose intolerant and I am going to be buying one of those. I do not care. I love creamsicles. They just remind me so much of summer and anything that's citrus and vanilla together, I'm obsessed. So so I went and bought this a year ago, fell in love. It's a beautiful lip treatment. Again, all the things that I said, it's thick, hydrating, moisturizing, glowy, but it comes out in like a little bit of an orangey shade. Um, it's clear on the lips, but you know, it's not something that I was wearing during the day because I was like, eh, I don't really want to have milky lips, but for night, obsessed. So then just a couple weeks ago, they extended this Pout Preserve line with three new shades, two permanent, one limited edition, which is sad because it's so beautiful. This is strawberry sorbet, cocoa cream, and blood orange spritz. These are all stunning. Are they similar colors to other launches? Yes and no. I find that the strawberry sorbet, which is the light pink option, is actually more of a mauve nude than the typical pinks that have been released. Um, I find that the cocoa cream is less of a true brown and has a little bit of that maroon undertone to it, which I love. And then the blood orange spritz is just a beautiful bright red toned orange that looks beautiful on, on top of every single lip color and it smells guys these smell so good they smell better than any of the other products out and they smell like what the name is like cocoa cream smells like cocoa cream I mean they really nailed it with these and it's something that I've always said when skincare brands come out with makeup it's always amazing and when makeup brands come out with skincare it always sucks so I knew these were going to be good they did such a great job and if you are looking for an alternative to road for whatever reason try these I think you will be so obsessed and I just think they hit the nail on the head for what I'm personally looking for in a lip treatment last but not least is what I'm wearing today and these are brand new from house labs these are the PhD hybrid lip glaze. I was so excited about these and I still am. I love these. Um, because as much as I like their lip oils, which I have two, I have a clear and this one in hue, which look at it. Oh my God, that doesn't look right. 
Anyways, this is like the pH adjusting one. Or maybe it's purple. It was supposed to be purple. I loved the formula of these products. These are the PHD hybrid lip oils. Some of them are pH adjusting and some of them are not. And I think that people assumed that these were going to be pH adjusting because the words PHD are in here, but it's PHD. Like your doctorate degree, not pH, like the adjustment of the color of your lips. So these are not pH adjusting. They are a more milky toned, like neutral shade range compared to their lip oils, which are more clears with really vibrant undertones to them. In my opinion, these are a much better version of the Merits. Like these are what I wanted from these. I like a lot of Merit products. Their lip oils are just okay. I keep them for whatever reason, even though I legit legitimately never wear them and now I will certainly never wear them because of these not that I will never wear them But like because lip products keep getting better and better I'm just not feeling the need to wear these other ones that are dry. They don't last on the lips, etc So today I'm wearing the shade fig and I've been talking now for like 35 minutes and I still have the gloss I still have the moisturizing feel on my lips even though the color has started to fade and that's what I'm looking for I'm looking for something that gives you the gloss the sheen and even though it's obvious the color will fade because it is a hydrating lip product, you're still gonna have the benefits of a nice moisturized lip after this wears away. These two shades are by far my favorite. They're persimmon and fig. I bought these myself and fig is just so, so beautiful. If you're looking for something that gives you that a little bit more than a lip treatment in terms of pigment, really wraps around the lips, feels like a cushion. These are them. I'm so impressed and I'm going to be wearing them all year long. That was a lot. Oh my God, there's a ladybug on my freaking beauty blender. They're everywhere, you guys. That was a lot and it wasn't even including all the stuff I wanted to talk about. Like I wanna talk about the new glow drops from Glow Recipe. Like there's so many more things that are coming out, but these are the things that I felt were most important to tell you about. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on any of these launches. I will have all of the links for these listed down below. And thank you again to Beekman for sponsoring a portion of this video. Again, you'll be seeing more from me and Beekman throughout the year. I'm so excited to share some of my favorites and I will see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye.